this is my DIY leaf blower power jet engine. I have always thought jet engines uh, were magical things. I never understood them. You've got air that goes in one side, mixes with fuel. You've got a huge array of complicated fans and turbines and other technical wizardry. Somehow the whole thing spins and fire and thrust comes out the other end. I never understood how these worked. I understood pulse jet engines, of course, because those are super simple and I've watched a ton of Colin Furs videos. However, one day, not so very long ago, I watched a video that would change my life forever. No, I'm not exaggerating. This video by Intexa. <laughs> What I suddenly realized was how stupidly, gloriously simple jet engines were. I guess I had been looking at the complex mechanism of a turbine jet engine and it looked so complicated I thought it was really complicated. In fact, the principle is stupidly simple. It's annoying. It took me so long to figure this out. A jet engine at its very simplest is a tube with air going in one end, fuel being injected in the middle, combustion happening, and then very, very fast particles of exhaust, fire, heat, etc., etc., flowing out the back. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, so of course those very fast particles create thrust. Essentially, this propane torch is a jet engine. Air is sucked in at the bottom, you have fuel injected into it, and out the top come a ton of superheated gases. Now obviously this particular jet engine is designed to be efficient at producing heat rather than thrust, so the amount of thrust this produces is negligible. But as far as the principle goes, this is a jet engine. All those fans and turbines and everything that looks freaky complicated is just to make it more and more efficient at producing that thrust. This is the most common type of jet engine you'll see. It's called the turbojet, or turbine jet engine. Why? Because it's got turbines in it. Turbine just means fan. I think. There's a ton of other types of jet engines though, of course, like the pulse jet engine, the scram jet, the ram jet, turboprop, turboshaft, it's, it, there's a bunch. You have a turbine in the front here that is connected to this same turbine in the back here. These two rotate as one. The air comes in, fuel is injected, they introduce a spark, combustion. All of that exhaust goes out the back end. Here's the thing, because you just had an explosion, there's a ton more pressure blowing out the back end, which means it will want to spin this fan faster than this one. As this one spins faster because of the exhaust gases rushing through it, it causes the front one to spin faster, which draws more air into it, which causes the back one to spin even faster and so on and so forth until you have this self-sustaining, very, very powerful turbojet engine. These get much more complicated when people realize that you could make them more efficient and more powerful by changing the shape. You can create a combustion chamber in there, create a nozzle on the back to get more thrust out, like a rocket nozzle. You can shape these turbines in certain ways. You can put in stationary um, air directors, basically, to further compress the air. These can get super, super complicated to make it more and more efficient. Instead of building a turbojet engine, which would take a lot of more complicated machinery. Basically, it would be a real pain in the butt to build all those compressors and turbines. They'd all have to spin, there'd be tight tolerances. It would, I'm lazy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a leaf blower and that will be our compressor. We will pull air in and fire it into our tube using some tubes like this. This is actually for a car exhaust system. I ordered a bunch of these things. They're like 16 gauge steel. We're gonna insert propane. We're gonna light that and then hopefully we get thrust out the back. The real question here is not whether we will get thrust, it's how much thrust. Our leaf blower simply might not be anywhere near powerful enough to blow enough air in to create enough thrust to do anything useful. But there's only one way to find out. This one's gonna go here. Then we've got this, which is gonna go there. First nozzle increases the velocity of the exhaust. Down this tube, second nozzle further increases the velocity of the exhaust. Nozzles, they stick them on everything from rockets to jet engines. They basically increase the amount of thrust by taking in um, your input and then by shrinking the diameter of the output, they cause the flow to speed up. Magic. I'll demonstrate this concept with something we all understand. 
a water hose. Right now we have a large amount of water coming out very slowly. However, if I restrict the opening with my thumb, to maintain the same amount of water coming out, the water speeds up dramatically. It's due to something scientists would call the conservation of matter, which means matter in has to equal matter out. In unscientific terms, the water going in has to speed up to maintain the same amount of water. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the coolest part. Disclaimer, I'm copying Integza completely in literally everything. All credit goes to you, good sir, you are amazing. I'm just supersizing your your idea. This is called a glow plug. It's essentially a spark plug for diesel engines. Somehow you hook this little baby up to a battery and this end starts glowing red hot. Heck yeah. Aw, oh, heck yeah. As far as fuel delivery goes, here's what I'm thinking. We're gonna take this copper pipe, so we're gonna drill holes in this and then we're going to curve it into a spiral that can slide down inside this tube. Then, we're gonna take our glow plug and we're gonna stick that somewhere about the middle here. I believe we're just oh. gonna first try sticking oh, it through the beautiful. side wall. Hopefully that's enough. It's possible that the amount of air and cold propane rushing through will cause this thing to get too cold and essentially go out. We'll see what happens. First step, we're gonna crimp off and fold over the top. And that'll just cap off our system real easily. Probably gonna need to drill the holes first and then bend it afterward, because once we've bent it into a spiral, it'll be impossible to get inside and drill the holes. Not sure exactly what size hole would be best. I think we're gonna go with eighth inch. I mean, it's not like it's rocket science, right? It's jet engine science. Then the theory is we can start bending this Okay. I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna get too hot inside the tube and the copper will melt. And let's just go ahead and shove it in there and call it a day. Working with copper is honestly too easy. It's like working with butter metal. So what we're gonna try to do now is attach a flare fitting to this. So let's slide this down and get my handy dandy flare tool ready, which I do not know how to use. Boom. Okay, like this. Ah, ha, 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 ha. And we'll tighten this down. It will begin flaring it out, I believe. And voila! The flare on this is set to mate with the flare on that, which then mates with the flare on the inside of here. So they use these flare fittings for gas lines. You don't even need any thread sealing tape or nothing. This is the stupid monstrosity I have created. I've got it strapped down to the table. So unless we're generating obscene amounts of thrust, which we won't be, this shouldn't fly off the table and catch everything on fire. I've got the glow plug hooked up there, which just run down to this like lawnmower battery. I think it's 12 volts. Seems to be working so far. The on and off switch there. Obviously got my propane hooked up. I think we're ready to test. Let's try turning the glow plug on first so we can get that heating up. Then we'll turn the propane on a little bit to see if we can get ignition. Then we'll turn this on. Low plug. Heck yeah, boys. Now, do we still have ignition on one? Low plug is on, no ignition, we need air. Okay. <laughs> Did y'all see that fireball? There's not enough oxygen in the tube, so the propane just built up, and then it just like all exploded out in a big fireball when I turned the air on. Let's try again. Holy! It took me a minute, but I think I figured out what happened. Basically, I got to the point where I turn the leaf blower all the way up to full speed. Leaf blower is maxed out. Then I start turning up the propane as high as it can go. And when I got towards opening the valve all the way, it started pulsing. Like, boom, 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 boom. 
it was acting like a pulse jet. My blower wasn't putting out enough oxygen to keep up with the amount of fuel in the system. So it would blow out unburned fuel, which would burn, creating a vacuum in the chamber. Then it would suck air in from the front. Boom, burn, blow out, back in, boom, blow out, back in, boom. And that's essentially exactly what a pulse jet does. Okay, ladies and gents, I'm ready for a thrust test. I've got it suspended by paracord from this old swing set. So if you get down here, it's not actually resting on anything. So it can swing back and forth. I've connected a piece of cord to the front of, uh, we'll call it the sled. That will come down and attach to the scale. So that when the jet is on, it will be pushing in this direction, which will tell us how many pounds of thrust we have. First thing to test is how much thrust the leaf blower puts off by itself. That was the leaf blower turned all the way to full throttle. And that looks like, and then we will compare that to with the fuel and everything turned on. The hope being that we're actually generating some measurable thrust. to retest that later but as it was scale says we're at eight pounds sorry six pounds <laughs> so we know that we are creating thrust i replaced the glow plug with a taser module and a spark plug so it sparks inside the chamber now hopefully we get some better results <laughs> Okay, that try went pretty well, but we still only got about six pounds on the scale. So, we are putting off more thrust than just the leaf blower alone. Not as much as I'd hoped for. I accidentally, somehow, ended up building the perfect, most efficient version of this jet engine the very first time. I tried a ton of different stuff to get this thing to put out more thrust, to get this thing more efficient, and nothing I did worked. I tried adding a wedge-shaped steel inside the combustion chamber in hopes of like increasing the flow around it and creating a more turbulent um, section in the combustion chamber to hopefully increase combustion. That didn't work, that decreased thrust. I tried restricting the end of the combustion chamber by adding a metal pipe in there in hopes that it would increase the pressure inside the combustion chamber, which would lead to more combustion, which would lead to more thrust. That didn't work also. I tried a smaller nozzle in hopes that it would increase exhaust velocity. No, that just slowed down the flow too much. I even built a second smaller jet engine, hoping that putting a smaller combustion chamber onto the same leaf blower would mean a lot more air flowing through for the size of the combustion chamber, which would drastically increase thrust. No, it did not. The only thing that increased thrust any was putting a larger leaf blower onto the jet. However, interestingly, that only increased the thrust proportionately to the power of the leaf blower. Meaning, with the original jet engine and leaf blower, we were getting between a 30 to 50 percent increase in thrust. With the larger larger jet engine, we were still only getting a 30 to 50% increase in thrust. Somehow, I managed to create the most efficient leaf blower powered jet engine possible the very first time I turned it on. It's time I come clean. See, this is a lot less of a jet engine and a lot more of an afterburner. An afterburner is a secondary combustion chamber they stick on the back of some jet engines. You see, turbojet engines are so incredible that they blow through way more air than they actually need. They only use on average about 25% of the oxygen that they are blasting through the system. They only use 25% because if they were to use a complete combustion, it would be so freakishly hot that it would melt the entire jet. Somebody realized with all this extra oxygen just being thrown away out the back, they could actually stick a second combustion chamber back there, throw in some more fuel, and you would be able to drastically increase the thrust output essentially free. Our jet is... it's an afterburner. An afterburner is never going to create an absurd amount of thrust. It is completely dependent on whatever machine is throwing air into it. Our jet engine is actually increasing the thrust of the leaf blower by at least 
30%, my scales aren't very accurate, but it's at least 30%, could be up to 50%. The problem is, of course, the leaf blower is only putting out four pounds of thrust. So even though we're increasing it by a large degree, it's only six pounds of thrust, which isn't enough to do anything. When you get right down to it, we built an incredible machine that turns propane into noise. And I'm proud of that.